uh, Hartley, Ward Hartley, who have invited me to come here for this week. Um, so I, I'm going to talk a bit uh, uh, in the next uh, 50 minutes uh, about the our prospects uh, for measuring and determining the X3 linear uh, self-coupling. This is, of course, uh, one of the parameters that uh, characterizes the X potential. So uh, what I'm going to do is, I mean, the first part of the talk is actually more like a, a lecture <laughs> than, uh, than a talk, because I will uh, uh, revise a bit uh, how we, we can deform uh, the, the X potential from the standard model. And then uh, uh, I'll discuss a bit uh, um, how we think we will determine it uh, with a typically 2x production. And this was discussed uh, uh, also uh, yesterday. Uh, and then I will discuss a bit a new idea that uh, has been recently proposed the last year um, by different groups, uh, including the one I'm working with uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, Giuseppe De Grassi, Pier Paolo, uh, David uh, Ambresh, and uh, Sharon Zhao, who is a student in Lugan. Okay, so x cap, uh, I'll make the story uh, very short here. So these are uh, all plots by now. So LHC run one plots, uh, which show, right, that for example, this is uh, in this kappa framework where uh, uh, you deform, you deform uh, only uh, the value of the coupling without changing the structure of the couplings. Uh, where we show, right, that for example, even if you put the, this coupling for the, to the vector, and to the fermion, the standard model value at one, you still have uh, some kind of degeneracy, for example, even uh, with negative uh, uh, fermion, um, coupling to the fermions. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, you are we are going to, you know, the all these different measurements point uh, to something which is very close to the standard model, compatible with the standard model. And the same if we measure, right, if we determine this coupling, uh, let's say, one, one at a time. So the situation is that it's telling us that somewhat the X uh, couples, as we know, to the standard model, it looks like the standard model X, right? The scalar particle um, resembles the X uh, a lot. What do we know also? Well, we know that uh, this is a famous plot because it's really, you know, straightforward to, to, to see. Uh, we, we know, right, that uh, somewhat the particle mass is related to the U kappa coupling. We have all the particles which uh, are heavy, except one, right, in this plot. One particle is missing, which is the Higgs itself, right? So the Higgs itself, we know its mass, but we don't know uh, the coupling of the Higgs uh, to itself. So we are missing one important information here. So for those who like numerology, uh, this is an interesting uh, uh, relation, uh, which I've been, uh, I've been warned that is dimensionally wrong because V is not actually the same units as a mass, but uh, uh, it's kind of interesting still, I think, right? So you can organize the masses of every particle, uh, the scales of the, the heavy scale of the standard model into a logarithmic spiral. So this I call the standard model logarithmic spiral. Very good. So uh, the X. So a low energy, the X potential. A low energy, uh, we write the X potential. So we forget about the goldstones, right? And we write only the the potential in terms of the Higgs in a kind of a unitary gauge. And then we get uh, the mass term, uh, the, the triple uh, interaction, and the four-point interaction. As we know, right, if we demand the renormalization, and in the standard model, have only two terms that can give, give rise to this uh, low energy description. And these are two parameters, right, mu and lambda. If you uh, fix the two quantities which, cannot, which we know, right? V, we get it from the mu of decay, and mx, we get it from, from measurement, everything else is fixed. So we have two degrees of freedom, two, two, uh, two constraints, and therefore, in the standard model, as we know, lambda 3 and lambda 4 are uh, fixed. We cannot change them. Okay? So it's a prediction that will tell us what are the self coupling, three points of coupling and the four-point self-coupling. I'm using a normalization in such a way that uh, lambda 3 and lambda 4 are equal to lambda, where lambda is this parameter in the standard model. Um, and, uh, uh, and also means that if we were able to uh, measure lambda 3 and lambda 4, right, then we could test to which extent the potential is uh, uh, the potential of the standard model. Okay. 
Now, if you want to go beyond, you have to deform in some way this potential. Okay. So you have to so what parameterize the a deformation. Right. So that in such a way that for example lambda three is different from lambda, lambda four is different from lambda. So since we are we have two parameters and four numbers, right, this this system is over constrained. So I if I add uh, for example, one way of doing it is either doing like SUSI or or two X double model we extend the X, right? So I, I consider to have uh, states which are light and accessible, or I use uh, a an effective field theory language. So if uh, all new physics, right, say, s uh, resides uh, at the scale, uh, uh, this is not really the scale of new physics, it's the upper bound of physics. Uh, anyway, let's uh, make it simple for the moment. At the scale lambda, then I can parameterize uh, such effects in terms of a tower of operators. Now, in general, there are many operators, as you know, I will talk about this uh, later, but let's say the, there is a class of operators which only change the potential, which are uh, written here. So I'm also using a normalization. So I, I'm normally you would see this operator written phi dagger phi to the n. But actually, if I use this normalization, it's easier. And the way why it's easier? Because uh, if I subtract v squared minus, uh, minus divided by 2 here, I get the, the standard model relations for v and m are unchanged. Okay. So any parameter, you know, and they're all equivalent, right? I can put this or not. At the end, this will be equivalent. But for, you know, for simplicity, it's this kind of parameterization is actually kind of nice because you don't change the standard model relations between lambda, v, uh, and x, and u. Okay. The thing that change, however, are lambda three and lambda four. Okay. So if you add the tower of these operators will change also introduce lambda phi, lambda six, and so on. So imagine now that you adding the first operator, which is dimension six, uh, is uh, lambda divided by lambda square, is phi dagger phi to the third power. Then you introduce one more coupling, which means that you break the relation between the this parameter and the coupling, but you don't break the relation between lambda three and lambda four. Okay? That means that lambda three, lambda four will again be connected. Okay, you cannot change lambda three and lambda four independently. They are connected. Is that clear? So the the kappa lambda for, for example if you introduce C six, kappa lambda becomes uh, kappa is uh, the ratio between the, the value of the standard model interaction and the new one, so it's a, a number, a number. Uh, kappa lambda is one plus uh, this C six uh, and kappa lambda four is one plus six times six x. Okay? So the relation between one and six, uh, this six here, is a somewhat a prediction of the, the effective field theory, which includes up to dimension six. Okay? If you want this entangle lambda three, lambda four, if you want to do a study where lambda three and lambda four are independent, you have to add the dimension eight operator in this scheme. Okay? And dimension eight in this scheme will only change, uh, will not change this relation, but will change this one. Uh, C6 will so also be there, but then you add a C8 term, and th therefore you disentangle the two. Okay. So this is important to remember because uh, I mean there are many studies in the literature about uh, three linear and also quadrilinear coupling. But uh, the point is that if we change uh, the three linear and we think in terms of the effective field theory, also the quadrilinear will change. Uh, right? This is a strong prediction. There is no so no, a, a low energy, right? We should say that both of them change. And so what? Kappa four, right, changes much faster than kappa three in this scheme. Yes, yes, a lot. Yeah. I worry a lot about that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll come to that back a bit. Uh, uh, I'll discuss a bit that. But thi this is one of the big problems that we have uh, uh, now because the the bounds that we have on C six are so loose that uh, for sure we are hitting a problem, right? all kind of this problem. It's related to unitarity, but it's also related to how good is this expansion really, and where is the scale of new physics, right? If you could push this far, then, but if it's uh, very close to TV, then uh, I start worrying about all these kind of effects. 
So uh, that's exactly the, the problem, okay? Uh, uh, the questions that we, we have to ask is uh, what are the new physics scenarios that can be proved via a given measurement which uh, access information on the self-coupling? How large lambda 3 can actually be, right? I mean, you, you want to have examples in models or uh, realization, we actually say, okay, lambda 3 is, uh, I don't know, three times the standard model, four times, right? Is it consistent? In particular, right, in this, ca in this case, uh, if uh, this is a key question, in fact, uh, and this is possible to have uh, lambda 3 very different from the standard model value while all the other coupling on the standard model stays the same. Okay. So this is a, 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 a not an easy question. Is that naturally, when you embed the, when you have a new physics model, you will change lambda 3, but you will change all the other uh, couplings also. Okay. And then, and then you wonder, right, if this model would have been tested better ch by measuring the other coupling on the standard model, not the except coupling. So, so this is uh, the series of questions which uh, somewhat uh, keep uh, at least some uh, of the model builders or theorists that deal with this problem uh, busy, uh, at least in this period. Okay? So I give you a, a few examples. So th there has been a series of papers on uh, partial wave unitarity, right? So this um, Michel and collaborator Ramon and, and company have tried to see uh, by looking at uh, scattering of the, or Higgs to Higgs Higgs or even the vertex and one loop uh, imposing that the vertex connect, you know, connection the one loop on the vertex will not be bigger than the vertex at, at uh, three level. They found something like the modulus of kappa just being smaller than six. There is a study, well this is a just a study which is kind of uh, just based on the Coleman and Wagner potential. You write the Coleman and Wagner potential and then you check uh, uh, how large, uh, so you introduce a singlet, a singlet and then you check how large the uh, lambda can be and you find something like four thirds. Uh, this group, uh, Christophe Grosjean and collaborator, have looked at, at the model, like an effective field theory model, where all x coupling to the standard model were more or less the same. Uh, but uh, parametrically, uh, the standard the potential was different, three was different, and they also found that this is possible if uh, kappa is smaller than six. And then there is a paper by uh, Adam and, uh, and Rattazzi, who has been uh, on the works for year, uh, one more, more than one year now, where they study unitarity in a more general context, and uh, it's not published yet, but uh, they show that also found something less than 10. So the, the point here to understand is that, you know, 10 seems a large uh, ratio, right? I mean, 10 times the standard model value, but lambda is small, right? In, the standard, in this normalization, lambda is uh, 0 0.12, right? So it's very far from 4 pi. So if you think of 4 pi as a unitarity problem, right? You are 100 times smaller than 4 pi. So uh, it's not problem, right? Even having 10 times the standard model one from this kind of a unitarity argument or loop uh, uh, factor, naively. Okay, so this, what, this argument what tell us or seem to tell us that even if you go and set the limit of order five, uh, this limit can be, u u I mean, uh, is useful, right? I mean, you learn something, okay? However, I mean, I'm personally uh, skeptical uh, about this. I, I don't know yet. Because, uh, I mean, more, more people study, the less this number becomes. And uh, not all effects have been considered. So this is something that uh, worries me. Uh, there is a, a very recent paper which I want to mention in this slide by Tillman and collaborators uh, on uh, a very recent, last, last week, different forms of the potential. They end in the dimension six, dimension eight, but also some kind of logarithmic potential or uh, a non-analytic uh, potential in the, uh, the origin of the field. And uh, they, and they studied whether um, they could accommodate, you know, this famous story about the first uh, order transition or second order transition uh, for uh, the electroweak uh, um, baryogenesis. Okay, so we know. 
So what one of the conditions is that there is, uh, we need a potential which has a first order transition and the standard model like potential is not a, a, a first order transition, it's a, it's a second order. So you know, it, it means that this minimum, this potential gets a minimum uh, uh, beyond the, the critical uh, temperature, which is very slowly getting there. When you want something with a barrier, then all of a sudden uh, you, you get a minimum to get uh, enough uh, uh, to be far from equilibrium enough to have uh, baryogenesis. And what they studied, what they saw, right, this is summarized the result in these two plots. So this is a three linear and this is quadrilinear with uh, respect to the standard model, so there's a ratio. And they see that uh, uh, if uh, these three linear are in this red region, you have a, a second order transition. And when you go to the blue, right, you have a second order transition. So a second order, uh, sorry, the opposite. <laughs> The first order transition is here, okay, in the blue. So you need this coupling to be bigger than two, uh, one, uh, one half or two, and uh, for the quadrilinear you get uh, greater than two also. However, right, and this is the, 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 the point, in this plot, the scale of new P lambda, the cutoff here, here is about two. Okay. So you, you have to be careful when you do these plots and to, to see that if you enhance too much uh, the, the coupling, right? Then you hit uh, the, the uh, you know, the cut of your theory, of your effective field theory. So this is a bit uh, the story that somewhat uh, we, uh, we, don't so we have no conclusive answer yet, okay? And therefore, we need a measurement, okay? That, that's, the, that's the argument. Okay? We don't have this potential uh, first order. And therefore, having a measurement on lambda, right, and maybe finding greater than two would, uh, would uh, you know, would open completely a new direction in this, uh, in this problem, which is a fundamental problem that we have. Okay, are there questions? So this is a bit of a summary. So how do we, so there are two methods now to access this information on the three linear. There is double production of the Higgs, why? Because if you produce two Higgses, right, you will always have uh, diagrams where the Higgses are uh, attached to the standard model particle which couples to it, but also at least uh, a class of diagrams where one Higgs emits uh, the two Higgs directly and you get access to the linear. So what are, how are the cross-sections? Well, the cross-section as a rule of effect, right, uh, you remember, right, we remember that a single Higgs is Picobar, a double X is 1,000 times smaller, and uh, a triple X is also 1,000 times smaller, right? I mean, even more. Okay. So, the, you know, uh, as a rule of the thumb, we can remember the fact. Whenever you add one X, you lose 1,000 in rates. So this makes this game extremely difficult, right? This is the first reason. The rates are small, okay? are small. If you increase the energy of your collider, you get better, right? You can gain a, a, an order of magnitude. Uh, but, you know, you don't completely change the game, right? It's not like, you know, for example, this process is like single top plus two x's. You, you gain uh, two order of magnitudes. In, uh, in uh, double one order of magnitude cross-section in 110 uh, collider. For the rest, uh, exactly as in single X, there are several channels that contribute. So it's very similar to the single X pl uh, plot, uh, this one. Apart from the fact that you see that TT bar X is, is, you know, has surpassed uh, uh, the W and the Z production. This is also something that you might want to remember, right? So TT bar X is the third process, and then let's see, uh, for double X, uh, while a, a, a single X is not. Is down, is down here. So there is, a, there is an overtaking there. However, uh, as, as I will show in a moment, the, the sensitivity. So this gives a sensitivity of uh, lambda with respect to the standard model value. So in the standard model, we are here. And now you start seeing what is the feature of, of these searches. The main feature is the fact that there are two classes of diagrams, as I was saying, the one with the three linear and the one without the three linear. And these two classes interfere, typically, and they interfere uh, negatively, okay? 
So if you if you move uh, uh, the value of lambda, right, you change the cross section significantly, and you also have a minimum, right, where where the so what the interference is maximal, and then you recover again. Okay, so you see that for example for single tau, you are the standard model sits uh, at the 14 TV or 13 TV sits exactly in the minimum, right? Uh, so we are maximally unlucky. And that's also true for single X production, by the way. Okay. So that, that's very close to a minimum. However, what we are really interested in is the slope of this curve, right? Because this gives the sensitivity. Is how big uh, is this cross section, of course, but, but also the slope. So from this plot, you immediately see, even though TT bar X is the third, right? It's somewhat not very promising, right? Because this slope is very flat. So you're not you're not very sensitive to the trilinear coupling there. So uh, this, this is the even though there are proposals to, to measure double X in T bar, still the sensitivity is bound to be low. That's the thing to think about. Okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to explain this. So the uh, back then, so this is a plot of 14, and back then we didn't have the NLO. Uh, exact with the top with the top uh, loop uh, effect. T loop improvement means uh, you take the EFT and you divide and multiply by the Born in the EFT and the in the full transformation. And this, uh, uh, as I show, is a reasonable approximation for total cross section. It's not so bad. Uh, so the results actually for total cross section didn't change very much. Now, one thing that is important, which has been noted since a long time, uh, uh, and collaborators. At the fact that if you change lambda, uh, uh, change uh, a lot in, in the distribution eh, of the PT image because of this interference. So, in fact, your sensitivity is not uh, only in the change of the cross section, but it's a lot, a big component of it is in the fact that the distribution change enormously if you change lambda. Okay? So, that means that we would really like to have enough events in double X to build the distributions because those will give uh, a uh, sensitivity. Right? This sensitivity is somewhat lost uh, and high PT. Okay. So uh, it, they come mostly for low PT region. So not, you know, the boosted thing might be good for the cross section, but the non-boosted, if you want, is still uh, interesting for at least this reason. So this is just a plot to show, I'm not going to detail, these are all NLO predictions for all the channels. So at least we have NLO prediction. For GGE, we have also some approximated uh, uh, NNLO. This is important. We can try to extract information on the coupling. Yeah. So that these are available and, uh, and be used. Okay. So what is the status? So as, as far as I know, but uh, things are evolving, uh, the best limit is from EPS 2017. On the cross section, the limit is 10, 19 times the cross section of the standard model smaller than the BB gamma gamma channel. Then Atlas before that at the 4B they excluded uh, values above 30. Okay. So parameterize these numbers. What what we do, right, we write the cross section of the standard model and then uh, we have two terms. One term is linear in kappa, right, in the three linear because it's the interference of a diagram which has the three linear with the box which has no three linear. And then uh, you have a quadratic term, which is the three linear squared. Okay? So when you change the, the, the three linear, you have some kind of para, you know, uh, close to one, you have a parabola, which is this one. Huh? Okay. So you, you always have uh, some kind of uh, parameterization, which is a quadratic function of kappa. Okay? Okay. So uh, now I'm going a bit fast here, just for information. So how the progress, this is this uh, EFT approximated. So what we, what people were doing before, were doing exactly what we, they do for the single links. They shrink the top and then they calculate NLO correction or NNLO correction. And then they renormalize it with a, with a, with a computation at three level, um, a leading order with a top loop. What, we re what people realized uh, some time ago is that this is a, an extreme approximation, right? Fantastic approximation for single links is, is a bad approximation for double links, right? So this is the, the distribution, for example, the invariant mass of the X pair 
in the EFT and in the full theory. And, and it didn't go on, and you see you are completely off. Right? Being completely off, you don't trust, uh, you basically don't trust it, and that's all. Right? You can try to improve it, but uh, you're not going to, be to go far. So what people uh, have then uh, done, right, recently is a fantastic calculation I uh, done by the in Munich, uh, where they were basically able to calculate the full NLO, right, which involves two loop uh, diagram, which are super difficult to calculate. So this is like cutting edge calculation, uh, where they did the two loop numerically. So that was the, the real uh, uh, advance. This is plot, it shows the comparison with what you get a leading border, right? So the NLO is the red curve, so it's a busy, a busy plot. But what you, I attract your attention is the difference between the red curve, which is the exact NLO calculation, and the green one, which was the best we could do without knowing the true loop, uh, that which they added. So for the PT the X, you see that the green and the red are pretty much uh, in agreement. So the PT the X, even with one was fine. For the invariant mass of the X, you see that a very large uh, invariant mass is start deviating outside of the assertive band. So that shows that, so what, you know, for, for phenomenology, even approximation, of course, in this case would work. However, there are differences which we could not predict uh, without doing the computation, okay? So now these results are even in the parton shower now. So they are available to the experimental community to be used at NLO, both in power and uh, in MC NLO. What is the outlook of this? Well, this is uh, by now in those slides, there are many studies which are uh, uh, phenol. Now we've seen also from the talk uh, uh, on double X that uh, this has turned into limits already from experiments. I just want this paper, which is written by a, theor by a bunch of theorists, phenomenologists, which uh, found right that uh, with uh, Lumi right, and 14 TV, we they estimate a 30% accuracy on lambda 3. And this is why I was so surprised uh, to hear uh, uh, on Monday, right, about uh, what uh, Marie Silva was saying, right, uh, that our estimates for lambda 3 are way off 30%, right? Uh, it's a completely different uh, game, right? So the, the estimate for, you know, phenol guys estimated in the 4B at 30%. This is the estimate right now. So how well we'll be able to do, I don't know. Okay, this uh, until we will do it, it's difficult to say. On it, and we have to be as creative as possible, right? Because we now we can't live with this after ten years of running and high lumi. We, we cannot, you know, it's not acceptable. Let's say right? we have to get better than that. Okay, so uh, double heat. You know, we know a lot of, this, but double heat will be. There's no, there is no way I will get smarter, but uh, maybe it will not be enough. I also uh, underline the fact that all these estimates assume perfect knowledge about the, sta the other standard model coupling. In particular, in particular, we have to know exactly how the top couples to the X, how the X couples to the top. There is no uncertainty associated in this estimate on the top X coupling, because it's always assumed that, that by the time I, I do the double X, I know it from PT bar X uh, or uh, other measurements, okay? So, uh, is there, uh, so how, how, do we, how do we analyze the problem more in a uh, uh, consistent way, assuming also the other coupling might not be different, might be different? Well, we use an effective field theory. So this, I'll, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not going to, uh, dig into too much, uh, but basically theory is the standard model augmented by a few operators which are which are listed here. So normally people get scared, but after you actually look into detail, it's not so bad as it looks uh, in these slides. And so you, you have uh, a few um, a few operators. Then the real game, right? You list the operators you want. Now again, just to give you an example, right? Each of these operators has a name. Right, this is a Yukawa operator, this is a chromomagnetic operator. So for people who are working on uh, you know, basically now we know it of this operator by looking at them. But it doesn't really matter here. What I want to stress is that 
these operators are bound or can be bound by, by series of measurement which involve the, the Higgs or not. So these are the operators, for example, in the, in the dimension 6, which involve the Higgs and the top. Uh, but there are, they contribute also to process where there is no Higgs. Right? And that's why uh, you need a, a, you know, a full program of measurement to actually access and bound all these operators, including this one, right? this Yukawa. Right? If you didn't have this term, it would just be a Yukawa. But it's dimension 6. It has this singlet uh, on top of it. Uh, which modifies the uh, Yukawa coupling. So this operator, if you want, uh, roughly speaking, is the equivalent of the kappa T that uh, our analysis use. Okay. So they, you see they enter. So what, uh, how, how do you analyze the problem of the double X? Well, you, you, you sit down, you draw the diagram, so you discover that there are like five operators uh, which contribute to double X in this language. It's not one, right? It's not only this, which is uh, the one I was showing before. There are five, uh, right? So is me measuring or accessing information double X in principle in the EFT, it gives it some global information on the linear combination uh, about all these couplings, not only on lambda. What does that mean? It means that if you want to access information on this coupling, you have to have bound all the others already, okay? So now the question is, uh, how good are we in bounding them? So this is a so this is a, my last uh, plot for this section. So this I call butterfly plot. It's been done by uh, a collaborator of ours, Eleni. So it shows. Uh, so on the on the x-axis you have this coefficient, right? How big are the coefficients of, of f these five operators? Okay, and on this uh, axis is the ratio of the start of the cross section divided by the standard model. Okay, so if uh, uh, if extra coupling is zero, then uh, the cross section is the standard model. If you deform it, you get something right, which is typically again a quadratic form of this coupling. Okay, and that's the reason why you get this minima. Now, this this uh, the lines become uh, uh, dashed when the, the there is a bound on this operator. So if this operator has been bound. The line is dashed. So you see that the, the purple line is the three linear modification. Is this uh, O6 that we talked before? You see there is no line, right? Now the line now is at 20, right? Is this cross, is this limit by CMS? It I would draw a line here, which is much farther, you know, if I go from top, you know, I should go down as a limit. It's you see, it's much farther. I hit this line as a first, okay? So this plot summarizes the fact that already now, the thing we don't know is lambda 3. Right? Before we have to worry about the others, we have to bound lambda 3. This is the situation we would always be like to be. Right? But at some point, we, not, we might not be there. Okay? It might be that they are all competitive. And then, uh, uh, and then the situation might change. Okay? Got it? So up to now is correct. So what to forget about all others? Because the limits are already good enough that we can forget. Now this is one by one, yes, by one. So good question, good good uh, good point. Uh, you have to take this with a grain of salt because uh, in general in AFT you have to change them all together, right? So you have you can have cancellation, and then all of this goes uh, into the uh, you know into the garbage. Right? So uh, you're right. Thanks. Yes, it's the same. Say it again, sorry. Yes. No, no, no. But, but okay, so uh, I'm, I'm not. Okay, let me rephrase this uh, as a lawyer. Okay, as uh, my lawyer was here. So the, the the point here is that this is a sensitivity plot. Okay. It shows uh, that the sensitivity that we have uh, on uh, lambda 3 now is currently higher right, if we, we respect to the ballpark of the others. That, that's, that's the only thing I'm saying. You should not use it to cause... So the only thing you can do consistently is a global fit. Right? That's the only thing which is allowed legally. 
uh, then in these phases where we are still studying, right, let me try to get an idea of how sensitive are each cross section by varying one, one operator at a time. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So this whole introduction, which uh, almost finished my talk, uh, this whole introduction to try to motivate that, uh, you know, another way of accessing to the trillionaire coupling. So what, what I, was try I was trying to argue is that maybe double X is not enough, uh, or we should try to get something else because uh, it's going to be difficult. So is there another way? So the, the proposal uh, that came uh, uh, said one year ago, roughly one year enough, is uh, to use loop, right? Loop induced processes. So our loop corrections in general. So the idea is when you compute electroweak corrections to any X single X production, you somewhat have a class of diagram which feature the trilinear coupling. So embedded inside the electroweak corrections for all single X processes, there is sensitivity to lambda free and one loop. Okay. So the question is, okay, this we knew uh, even before, but the question is, can you exploit this sensitivity first uh, in a consistent way, in a gauge invariant way, and you know, uh, in a way which is uh, fair, theoretically, and second, if it, there is enough sensitivity, right? Why, why you say, well, you know, these electroweak connections are very small, right? So we'll never, you know, how can this be sensitive, right, you know, naively? But the answer is, uh, well, you know, we have 1,000 times more data on single X than in double X. So this 1,000 ratio maybe is enough to overcome alpha weak suppression, right? Which is uh, 100, let's say. Okay. So, so this is a bit the logic, right? If can we beat with the rates the suppression that electroweak uh, corrections? First question. So the, the second question is maybe, right, uh, the effects on each one is small. But if I combine all of them, right, the different channel, right, maybe the correction to the TT bar goes in one direction, the correction on W, uh, w dk, X in W hour is going in another direction, right? And then I get a pattern which is non trivial. It's not like all going up or all going down, for example. You get some kind of pattern. Is this the case or not? Well, the only way to do it is to calculate it, right? And that's what we did. Uh, so we also calculate these in a, in a given approximation. So we, we calculate all of them uh, right, and check uh, explicitly if this could give uh, an angle, right? So, since, uh, so this idea was, pro was uh, proposed the first time by Matthew in E plus E minus uh, in, uh, in 2013. And then, uh, uh, as I said, the la not last summer, but the previous one, then the you know, two papers came out with the calculation which I'm mentioning, and then a full series of, uh, of other studies uh, followed. Uh, this is now pu uh, published, actually. It was, uh, it's available. Right? I didn't update the, the slide. So th there is interest in the community, and people uh, have uh, spent more time. So how, do how does this work? Well, we parameterize the change in the single X cross section exactly as in the double one. So there is a term which is linear and then a term which is quadratic. Okay? Same logic. So the term which is linear depends on the kinematics of the process. So it's really a loop factor, right? Something which depends on the kinematics. So uh, um, yesterday Rogero mentioned uh, the Sommerfeld effect uh, when we were walking. I'll come to that in a moment. Uh, and then there is another term, C2, which is uh, universal, which is given by bubbles, right, by wave functions, which actually belong to all processes, right? When once we have one X, we also have this bubble. So uh, both terms are used, okay? So C1, you need a code, right, to, to, to compute, and all these codes are public now. So they can be directly used again by the experiments. So what are the results? So the results are here. So the, uh, these are the coefficient, okay? So C1 is in percentage. So the changes, in the, these are total cross-section changes. And you notice a few things. First, uh, the changes are different for each of the single X production properties. So let's look at 13 TV. So this is like this C1 
is like less than 1%, a very small number, okay? So you have to multiply by a big number for something which uh, is significant right now, right? I mean, it's order of 1%. Apart for PT bar X, uh, where it's huge uh, compared to the other, right, is 3.5%, okay? So there is a, a big sensitivity, right, in PT bar X for this self-coupling at one loop. So until you calculate, of course, you, you, you don't know. Uh, but that's what we find, right? So this is a blow, you know, a zoom in, uh, and you see that the sensitivity is much bigger for PT bar X. So where does this sensitivity come from? It comes from Sommerfeld enhancement effect, right? It comes from the exchange of almost a real, uh, well, it cannot be real, but let's say a minimum Q squared equal to zero, so when, they, when these two particles are going very slowly, they exchange a column uh, kind of X, uh, and the, uh, the cross-section gets enhanced, uh, and that's the same in PT bar X. If you cannot have a kinematically sober for the enhancement, the correction stays constant and small. Constant means it will not depend on the kinematics. So for VBF, uh, right, so you see VBF does not appear in this uh, table because VBF has not, you cannot do summary for the enactment in VBF, okay? So this explains why VH and PT bar X are the most kinematic dependent uh, on this measure. The other thing which is interesting is that these effects are enhanced at threshold. While typically when we do EFT, right, we think about effects which are enhanced in the tail, right? We want to enhance the tail, and this is what I'm, I'm showing this plot, right? So typically, when we do EFT at three level, right, we look for deformations in the tail, but these one loop effects are deformation at threshold. So they're somewhat complementary, right? Because people worry that, you know, you might have a, a degeneracy of effects, right? I, if, if you study an EFT, you might not be able to actually detect these effects because are in the same phase space region. Well, this is not really true. They live uh, somewhat in different uh, spaces. So if you measure PT bar Higgs at threshold, you are very sensitive uh, to this effect. Okay, okay so that what we need was to provide the differential distribution. You see, VBF has no, no, effect, no kinematic effect, right? Uh, while Z age and PT bar age are very different. In fact, the most, the dif the most different of all is single top plus X. Huh? It's usually different, again, because you are spoiling this cancellation if you change the self-coupling. You have very, unfortunately, you also don't have any cross-section, I mean, very small cross-section, so it's not realistic to think that we will have a distribution for single top plus X uh, and then it's even at the end of a high Lumi run. Okay, so now I'll, I'll speed up. So we computed uh, the, the e electroweak corrections uh, uh, differentially and added to the standard model production in this last paper. These, all these calculations are available publicly so that uh, they can be used uh, uh, in the experiments, okay? So, of course, also the branching ratio are, are affected, uh, and this is shown here. So, basically, what we are, we are saying, right, is uh, uh, as a first try, right, use, uh, so what we did it was use the published data of this uh, famous combination, right, and uh, and then look if there is a pattern, right? Look if there is a, a three-linear pattern in the deviation. Of course, uh, you have to use the uh, UF, and you have an accuracy that you have uh, with the present data. But the question is, okay, now, with this data ATV, are you sensitive at all, or you're far, right, from being useful? Uh, so this is, for example, a, you know, a plot of the deformation I was talking about, right? So these are uh, channel GG, VBF, VH, VH, VBH, and for each decay, gamma, gamma. So it's the same plot as before, but rotated. And you see that if I deform lambda, if I put lambda 14 times in standard model, right, all these cross-sections go down, all these rates, sorry, these are rates, go down while this one goes up, for example. Right? So depending on the, on the value of lambda, you get a pattern. Then if you have one parameter fit, uh, if you do one fit on all your X data, single X data, you can bound. Okay. 
And that's what we did as an exercise. Uh, and to make the story short, right, using ATV data, we were, you know, uh, you know, just theorists using this published data, so not, not serious stuff, right, just a normal case chi-square fit uh, of this table. Uh, we got uh, a limit, right, between 9 and 17, uh, which, uh, if I reinterpret the data from CMS, the best limit now of the data from the CMS, 8 and 15. So you see that, I mean, we are with the ATV data, these are, this is 13 TV data, uh, we are on the same level. So we are not far, right? we, are, we are in the same ballpark. So this is competitive uh, now, right? Now it's competitive with the direct production. So this is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, at least to me, motivates the fact that it would be nice if uh, Atlas and CMS do this fit uh, on their own, right? Because uh, that, that would be more, um, you know, more solid, more robust. So I if I look uh, and uh, our own extrapolation based on these uh, uh, studies that we had uh, uh, in these reports uh, from the strategic group and so on, you see that go down uh, to between uh, minus two and seven, which if you remember the, the limits shown yesterday and on Monday by Larry Silva, it, it's not too far, right? I mean, you're better here, but it was this exactly the same there right now. So again, uh, uh, these only using total rates. I'm not using differential rates. So we tried. Uh, so people, uh, you know, went ballistic in the sense. I mean, so then they start looking at this uh, more in detail, even for electroweak precision observable, right? And uh, they they found the limit uh, also there. But this this is interesting because you know, at two loops, you also modify the W bus relation to the Z, right? So so this been done by two independent groups with the same result. The, the, the problem with this is that we don't foresee this to improve very much in the fall in the coming years. The, the limit you get is, is what you will get for, for some time. And uh, you, improve, uh, uh, you improve a bit, uh, right? The current limits, right? You improve them a bit. So not bad. Nice to see uh, what happens uh, in the following. And then the group by Christophe Grosjean and so on, did the same analysis in the full EFT, right? To try to actually answer to this question, what if uh, you actually use the full EFT to bound it? You do a really global fit now, using also the information from indirect, right? Direct and indirect. And this are shown, right? So, so what they found that there is a kind of degeneracy, I mean, this is a discussion which uh, maybe uh, we can postpone it, but basically, you know, as a, as a, as a as a result, uh, what they found is that if they use the age, uh, the indirect one, plus the age age, uh, you sti they still somewhat have uh, a degeneracy, right, between two values of kappa. Remember, this is this parabolic thing. So when you measure in the cross section, you always have two solutions, and only the distribution will disentangle the two. While if you include the distributions, right, if somewhat the second minimum, and you go and this is assuming the standard model. Okay. So th they somewhat make strong size the differential distributions. And that also, sorry, and that's also what we did uh, uh, in this last study we published in September. We added a distribution for TP bar age and V age. Uh, um, so this is uh, uh, without the information, and this is with the, sorry, the, the, these lines here are with the kinematic information and the other are without. So you improve a bit, uh, but not, not very much. Uh, but the key point would be to improve uh, on the distribution of TP bar X. Then the other exercise that we did, we varied. We didn't do it in the EFT, but we varied kappa V and kappa T. Uh, just to give an idea on how, so how much of sensitivity you need from the other channel to bound lambda 3 from indirect. So the results are there, and, uh, and that's it. So uh, these are my conclusions. Uh, well, the message, uh, uh, I hope, uh, was clear. Uh, so there is double X, right? So the problem of the X potential is, uh, I think, one of the outstanding questions that we have to answer as uh, mandatory. 
cannot uh, avoid it, right? As a community, that's one of the main motivation for the uh, high Lumi upgrade, at least in my point of view, standard model kind of motivation. Uh, and to me now, there are two ways, right? There is the double Higgs and there is the single Higgs precise. And this somewhat, contrary to what one could have guessed the beginning are somewhat competitive. And uh, my message is that we should try to, to keep both on, the, on our uh, agenda. That's all. Thank you.